Our study is titled Agricultural Input Subsidy Programs and Dietary Diversity, a Qualitative Assessment in Malawi with Implications for Policy um, Implementation uh, Theory. Um, so since the 1990s, many low and middle income countries, particularly in Africa, have invested in agricultural input subsidy programs to improve agricultural productivity. These subsidies are a grant given to poor farmers to help them afford the inputs needed to increase productivity, um, inputs such as fertilizer or hybrid seeds. But whilst the subsidies are considered to be beneficial for productivity and farmers' incomes, the evidence on this is mixed and any flow on effects for nutrition are also unclear. Um, this is also because the staple crops targeted um, by the subsidies are often calorie dense but low in nutrients. Malawi's farm input subsidy program, the FISP, is a fairly um, prominent, fairly well-known example of an agricultural input subsidy um, program. So this study builds on existing work on the FISP to examine implications of um, FISP policy um, design and implementation for dietary diversity. And it does so by engaging with work on theories of policy implementation. The research is undertaken in the context of a high level of food insecurity and malnutrition in Malawi. Um, the FISP was originally implemented in 2005-06. It provides subsidies on improved maize seed and maize fertilizer and since 2008 has included uh, legume seeds. In the study, we draw on theories of policy implementation. Um, so to help understand the gap between um, what was planned and what, what occurred as a result of a policy, two models of policy implementation have been developed, the top-down approach and the bottom-up approach. With the top-down approach, policy implementa implementation is seen as a managerial um, activity. Um, policy is designed by policymakers at the top and communicated to people lower down in the chain who implement it. Um, it's a useful way to conceptualize policy implementation, but it's a bit unrealistic. Um, in contrast, the bottom-up perspective emphasizes the complexity of the, of the policy process, and it considers how the people who implement the policy um, themselves have a role in shaping how the uh, policy is implemented. Um, Linda and Peters um, have brought together these two approaches and identified factors that play a key role in shaping government policy implementation choices. Um, and we draw on this model in our study. We undertook 24 in-depth interviews and 16 focus group discussions with several um, key stakeholder groups. Um, the interviews were undertaken in either English or in the rural villages in Chichewa, and the interviews were analyzed using in vivo, um, and we used both an inductive and deductive approach to, to our analysis of key uh, themes. The respondents described severe food and nutrition problems in rural Malawi. Uh, so a group of men said, we eat just to ease hunger. Um, a group of women talked about not having enough to eat um, at that time of year. So their bodies um, tended to get smaller um, and with farming, it just gets uh, worse. Respondents had differing views on reasons for the lack of dietary diversity. Government respondents often spoke about limited diets as being a choice. Uh, but in contrast to this, village respondents described their in inability to afford my di more diverse foods um, and said that this was due most, mostly to products being um, uh, more expensive than maize, um, the most maize being the most commonly grown uh, crop. Um, so um, someone said uh, that the health worker tells us the foods that we need to eat, but due to poverty, we are unable to eat uh, to get such foods. So we just listened to him. For example, to eat, eat balanced diet foods from the six groups. Myself, I cannot afford at the moment. I'm just waiting, waiting to eat Ensema, uh, then that is it. Ensema being a type of maize flour porridge and the staple uh, food in Malawi. Village chiefs were often positive about this for dietary impact, but other people in the villages described little impact um, as agricultural output remained low um, and food in markets was unaffordable. Um, Ministry of Agriculture respondents had a greater awareness of the FISP than health respondents, um, and they were particularly positive about dietary impact. Uh, civil society respondents mainly expressed reservations, uh, describing how a focus on maize um, did not help diversify diets due to maize being a low value crop, um, and uh, they expressed support for high value uh, legumes. Problems with FISP implementation were particularly in regard to the issues of um, the poor targeting of beneficiaries, perceived lack of coupons, including reductions in the number of coupons over time, coupons arriving late, problems with uh, policy coordination between stakeholder groups, um, and also due to the sharing and the selling on of coupons amongst those in uh, the targeted communities. 
So coupons were described as often being sold to more wealthy farmers to address, um, address people's immediate financial needs. Um, and the sharing of coupons in communities was described as being common um, and was considered to dilute the effect of the program. Despite changes to FISP targeting, um, problems still remain um, in, the, in the communities. Village respondents described how the FISP brings jealousy and conflict and has even resulted in the death of chiefs. Um, village chiefs, who are often supportive of the program, um, also describe problems. Uh, so one said that as chiefs, we have problems with this program. When these coupons, coupons are not enough, people turn against us and the questions we normally get are, do you think I am rich? So normally the chiefs are in trouble um, and there are always conflicts. Each stakeholder group described alternatives and improvements and a common theme was the need to diversify diets away from maize. Um, and any changes to the program as described, described by a village chief need to reflect the importance of sharing and uh, community. Uh, so this person said, um, firstly, it's love. If we don't have love, things will not work for us. For example, if I re receive 10 coupons, then I give five to my friends to share, then that is selfishness. If they are six, we need to share equally. The findings provide some new insight into the barriers to impact in these types of programs and particularly point to the way that on the ground decision making amongst the people targeted by a policy influences the impact of the policy. Um, in this case, resulting in the sharing and selling on of coupons as a way to address a need for social cohesion um, and um, undertaken in the context of extreme poverty. Um, our analysis highlights a key component that should be added to Linda and Peter's theory of policy implementation. Uh, the influence of factors at the ground, grassroots level uh, shaped by the characteristics of the target population. And related to this are the needs of addressing multiple food uh, related objectives um, of food insecurity um, as well as dietary diversity. Uh, FIS policy reform um, may be partially beneficial, but policy would likely be more nutrition sensitive if it focused more directly on increasing smallholder farmer income um, and mitigating impacts of seasonality and extreme uh, weather events. And we think that these findings have applicability to um, agricultural input subsidy programs in countries um, elsewhere. Uh, we'd just like to finish by thanking um, our funder, the drivers of Food Choice Competitive Grants Program, our uh, fieldwork colleagues, um, and of course the study participants. And we dedicate this study to the memory of our colleague, Professor Ephraim Wadonda Chilwa.